What's happening? Welcome. Look, Carmina, we back at it again. Praise the Lord, everybody. Even uh, though we couldn't get them a good, you know, the, the gospel folk do do instrumentals too. They do. Them. <laughs> so, so basically, what you're trying to say is you didn't like my instrumental. I'm just saying, you know, it just we was pop locking and dropping, and then it was like, praise the Lord, everybody. Well, I mean, ain't nothing wrong with a little pop lock and drop. You know, just get in where you got that right. Not tonight. We're not doing it. The preachers here. We got that. We're all the preachers oh, here. Okay. Yeah, that's right. We got all the preachers. Yeah. Here. <clears throat> all right. All right. We'll <laughs> Welcome everybody for night two of a very special night. This is the <laughs> Meet the Conformers part two. And this is the countdown to the seventh annual Avidity Awards. I am your host tonight, Derek Huggins, joined by the illustrious, the wonderful, the vivacious, and the oh so crazy evangelist, shepherdess, supreme missionary on our cousin side, just a little lower than the angels. <laughs> I'm sorry, what's the qualifications for a shepherdess? I mean, I'm just trying to make sure I'm doing <laughs> Welcome, Carmina. Hi, everybody. And you know what? Thank you, everybody, for joining us for night two. Thanks, everyone. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. We're so excited to be here with you guys tonight. So as you all that watched us last night, first of all, before we do this, I need everybody, including all of our performers that are waiting backstage, do me a big, big favor. Go on my profile page, Derek Huggins. Please share this video. Please love it. Heart it, heart it, heart it. Give us a lot of hearts and let the people know that you're watching uh, tonight and share that so that all of your wonderful supporters and fans and watchers and listeners and well wishes and do-gooders can uh, know that you're on tonight and that you're going to be a part of the show. So all of y'all doing that, uh, I'm trusting that those of you that are backstage, you're doing that even as we speak. And I appreciate that so very much. 
Uh, get those, let's get those hearts on up there, y'all. I see you. Cl they're, they're climbing slowly. There you go. All right. We're getting there. All right, y'all. So listen, we had uh, part one of this last night with um, the first half of our performers. It was an amazing evening. We had a lot of fun and probably too much fun, but we had a lot of fun nonetheless. And so tonight we're going to uh, introduce you all and present to others our other half of the performers on uh, tonight. So Carmina. Well, last night we had the lay members, and then tonight we got the clergy. Oh, oh. that's what we elevate. See how God did it? Yeah. Oh, he, he did it. He did a quick work, huh? My God. <laughs> no, all, all of right. them are amazing, and we're just happy to share more, and I'm excited about who's to come. I mean, when can we introduce them? I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> all right, so we're going to introduce them. Let's start this. Now, you know, he's going to get mad at us for doing this, but I call him the right Reverend Bishop, mm -hmm. Supreme Elder. You know, <laughs> all of that is in order. That's yes. Mm -hmm. Listen, well, I am a I am a total fan of this guy, so I'm going to bring him on. Without further ado, the right Reverend Bishop L. Spencer Smith. What's going on, sir? <laughs> <laughs> you got to come off of me. I, I'm grateful, man. I'm so glad to be here. <laughs> Y'all have tickled me immensely. I'm telling you, I'm glad, Derek or Kamina. I really appreciate being on with you all tonight, and looking forward to all of the awesome things that's gonna happen at the Avenue World Awards and that weekend of great music, great celebration, great appreciation for gospel music. Um, and man, I'm just glad that you all would have me to be a part of it. So yeah, thank you. And you can, you know, you ain't gotta use all those titles. Thank you. <laughs> Don't get me in trouble with the Lord. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. We, we, it looks like you're at the house of the Lord right now. You you in the, in the tabernacle? <laughs> I actually know I'm down in my in my basement on my lower level. No, he got a no same basement. Wait a minute, the wait a minute, Carmina. He's now, I, did you catch it though? He said I'm on my lower level in the basement. I, well, it is. Can I, can I be like you one day? Can I be <laughs> like, you like you? Yes. Man, it's I a mean, basement. Is there dude. like a book? Are you gonna write a book like that on how to get your basement That's on fleek? I just want. Yeah, to I don't. I don't. I, I don't. I, yeah, That's whatever. Cute. No, don't wait on it. Don't wait on like it. Like no, no ebook, no nothing, no master class, no webinar. No, not not about not about a basement anyway. <laughs> well, we appreciate you being here. Thanks so much for being here tonight. So we're gonna get on with the rest of our uh, wonderful performers. So up next, we're gonna bring on this young lady. And I will just pop up on the screen. Bam! Marchetta Parker, everybody. Hey! What's up, Marchetta? Hi, everybody. I'm so excited to be with you all. We're excited that you are here. So for the ladies. Yes, yes, yes. 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 So tell the people where you are from. I am from Raleigh, Durham area, Durham, North Carolina, by way of Southwest Michigan. So I have been in North Carolina for over 20 years. So I guess you can kind of say I'm from here. So <laughs> yes, indeed. I absolutely love it. So North Carolina's represented real well. So speaking of North Carolina, let's just stay there and go to another young lady Yay. who is a uh this year was three times Stellar Award nominee. Yes. And she also performed at the pre-show at the Stellar Awards this year. And that is none other than the Kim Person. Kim Person, what's up? You're on mute, sweetie. Take it. Yeah, go off on mute. Ah. Hey, how y'all doing? <laughs> doing good. How are you doing? So good to see you. I'm doing good. It's so good to see you. I'm so excited about tonight. So excited. Well, listen, okay, we're good. excited about yeah. you being here. <laughs> Your response at all times should be that you're wonderful. What did, what did you say? <laughs> y'all see, y'all missed it. But y'all was doing this. That's what I was singing. Wonderful, oh, okay. marvelous, okay. Uh, okay. glorious, uh, yes, you are. Hey. Yes. All right. All I love right. it. <laughs> so that's what you're going to give us. We're going to talk to all of y'all in just a few minutes, but we're going to keep on bringing in our other performers that are here tonight. And so we're going to go down to Houston, Texas, and bring this gentleman up, Carmina Don't Stop. <laughs> What's going on, Derek Huggins? Dr. Carmen. James Mabel Jr. What's up, man? <laughs> Not much, man. Happy to be here tonight. Hello to all the wonderful uh, artists. And, and uh, since Carmina called us the, uh, uh, you know, clergy to all of the men and women of God uh, here tonight. No, but I'm it's excited. Clergy, Dr. James Mabel Jr., Houston, Texas, by way of a little country town called Navasota, Texas. You've never heard of it. Don't worry about it. It's okay. Just a good old country boy that loves the Lord 
and uh, happy to be here and looking forward to this conversation tonight, the fellowship, and as well as Memphis, Tennessee in October, man. Thank you for having me, Derek. Yes, sir. Now, I just want to ask that. Did they finally put the stop sign in in Navasota next to the Dairy Queen? Is it like they... <laughs> you know, we, we still have our two stoplights. We got oh, two. Oh, y'all got two now. When did We've they have? Stoplights. But our Walmart God. still closes at 11 o'clock. All right. God is yet moving. Y'all got two <laughs> stop signs. I just thank God for that. That's amazing. All right. <laughs> we appreciate you here, Jax. We're going to talk to you some more. Look, we're going to go on up uh, on the East Coast. And this young man's got a crazy blazing new uh, single out uh, called He Kept Me. And so we're going to bring on the stage Lamont Sanders. Hey, hey, what's up, family? What's happening? What's happening? How you doing, sir? Oh, man, I'm doing good, man. I'm so glad you're having me. Glad to be here. How's everyone doing this evening? We are great. We're great. I'm great anyway. And, you know, Carmina going to cut up as usual, but that's all right. Y'all so look her. Awesome. I kept it real, real sanctified. Awesome. Yeah, she, yeah, she, she kind of, yeah, she kind of. All right, well, we're glad to have you, uh, Lamont. Thanks for being here tonight. All right, we're gonna go on over to you know the whole city, Memphis, Tennessee, and this young man's a pastor. You know, he one of the coolest. You know, he's just that dude, and uh, that is none other than Courtney Franklin, Pastor hello. Courtney Franklin. Hello, what's hello, going on, hello. sir? D Hook, what's up, Carmina? Everybody, Amen. Bishop. My brother, congrats on the number one song again. Man, good to see you all. Yes. Everybody, Kim, everybody. Good to see y'all. Good to see, good you, to see you, man. So we'll be talking to you and all of y'all uh, momentarily. I've got, now listen, I've got Holy Sons on here. Now, I forgot to tell y'all Holy Sons. I wanted y'all all to be in one place because it's a bunch of y'all. And I only got so many blocks on this thing that let y'all in. Praise God. So I'm going to have to talk to y'all in shifts. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna talk to one, and then I'm gonna take you. I'm gonna talk to another one, and I'm gonna take you. And then I'm gonna talk to another one and take you. Yeah. We just, I gotta, I gotta put them in and put them out. I gotta, like a coach, it's a football team. They a whole football team over there in Chicago, <laughs> you know. So we, we gotta put them in, substitute, put them in, put something. All right, y'all. But anyway, from Chicago, Illinois, we got uh, the sighting Holy Sons here. I'm gonna bring on uh, Brother Isaac. I think first, Brother Isaac. How you doing, brother? Ass? Uh oh, sorry. You you still on mute, Bishop? Hello, I'm sorry. How's everybody doing? Doing well. Now, do me a favor, Isaac. Turn your turn your camera to the side for us. To the side, a, okay. A good full full picture. Look like Praise the Lord. Uh oh, you got to You well, I'm gonna let you work that out. While he working that out. We're going to get started with the conversation tonight. Listen, I'm so excited. Everybody, if you're watching this right now and you have not given us some hearts, shame on you. And if you don't do this with the next five seconds and get some hearts to share this video, in seven days, your breath going to stink. So get on that right now because you don't want no stinking breath in seven days. I speak it right now. You better get the liking, get the liking, get the liking, and get the sharing right now in the name of Jesus. Listen, somebody said, I don't want no stinky breath. They didn't give us a heart come either. They gave us the care emoji. <laughs> they were real serious. <laughs> like, I don't want no stinky breath. I, I, well, hold on. My God. So anyway, <laughs> we're, we're just so excited to have you all here tonight. Thank you all so much uh, for being here. We appreciate you so very much. And listen, we're really, really excited. I want to start this by saying um, our team is literally working around the clock to make sure that this show is the best ever, not just for us and what we're presenting and the presentation, but for all of you as well. And those of you who are watching who will be attending the show in Memphis, Tennessee. So just a reminder, everybody, the road to Memphis, listen, all right, all roads lead to Memphis. It's, a, you know, it's kind of in the middle of the country, you know? So if you're on the East Coast, on the West Coast, you're in the Midwest, South, all of that, come on to Memphis, Tennessee. And we got three wonderful days of events for you. All right. So on October the 13th, that's our pre-show day. And we're going to be giving out some awards that night. We're also uh, it's going to double as a net session to meet each other, take pictures on the red carpet and all of that. And then you also get to hear some amazing independent artists that will be taking the stage that night. So it's going to be a wonderful night. I'm going to be there. Carmina's going to be there. A whole lot of others are going to be there. And I want you to be there because the pre-show is a really, really important kickoff for the festivities. So please make sure that you are there. All right. And then on 
Friday is the big show, October the 14th. That's the biggest night in independent gospel music. Yes, it is. I'm telling you right now, because the stuff we have planned for you is bananas. If you have been to our show before, I promise you, you will not see anything like what we're doing this year. All right. There are some new elements being incorporated this year just for you. We have raised the value of the show. We've raised the specter of what we want everybody to see that night. So you owe it yourself to be in Memphis, Tennessee on October the 14th. And then, of course, on Saturday, October the 15th, from 10 to 3, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., we're going to have the live session, the live edition of the Indie Artist Help Desk. And you don't want to miss that. It's a clubhouse that I've started about a year and a half ago. So shout out to Radio Robin, who encouraged me to do that, uh, Robin McCullum. And we're going to do it live. And so we've got some wonderful people, panelists that are going to be there, including Dre Tate of the Williams Brothers. We're going to have Tracy Bethea is going to be a panelist. We got Carmina Barnett. I dragged her in last night. She didn't know it. So she's working overtime. <laughs> we'll be there. I will be there. We have Sean Keyes will be there. Uh, Roger Willis. I mean, we've got some heavy hitters in the industry that will be there. And we have everything going on that, that particular day. We got five to six sessions. And part of those sessions will include a grant writing seminar for artists. Artists, there is money out there that can help you underwrite the things you're trying to do with your music. So you owe it to yourself to be there. And that's on Saturday, October the 15th. So it's going to be an amazing night. But tonight we're here to talk about these wonderful performers that are going to be taking the stage, the biggest night of independent gospel music, and they will be on the main stage. And they are here and ready. So Carmina, who do you want to start with first? Well, you know, of course, I'm going ladies first. So come on, Kim, talk to us. Talk to us, Kim, person. <laughs> and Kim, you have had an amazing year. And as 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 uh, Brother Derek told, told us in the beginning, you've been nominated quite a bit this year. And I mean, have been riding high with this brand new project. Kind of talk about that as an independent artist, because you don't have the whole record company machine behind you. A lot of the trips you take have to be out of Kim Person's pocket. Yes. A lot of the events you attend have to be registered and entered out of Kim Person's pocket. So kind of talk about that for those who may be joining us in chat and they're up and coming artists and they're like, OK, well, what do I do? How do I keep pushing? How do I move forward when I got to take care of everything? Talk about balancing it for you. Yes. All of it is definitely a process, but I just simply believe that God rewards faithfulness and that if you stay faithful to the calling that God has on your life, the sky is the limit and he'll open doors for you that you've dreamed about and he'll even surprise you and blow your mind beyond your wildest dreams. And that's kind of like what I've been um, experiencing over the last year or so with my music, with my Journey 2.0 um, project, with my wonderful single. God has just blown my mind beyond my wildest dreams. And I never would have imagined that I would be sitting in this moment in my life. But it's just a sign that God rewards faithfulness. And I'm just so excited to have the opportunity to have been on the lot largest um, stage for gospel music and now on the largest stage for independent artists. So, I mean, I'm just super excited about, you know, uh, being a trailblazer because it's been a lot of blood, sweat, tears, money, just doing things on my own without being paid promotionals. But now, you know, I can request a little bit more money because of, you know, some of the accolades, but it, it's just been a whole lot of work, but God rewards faithfulness. And I'm just glad to have this moment to continue to brand, market, and share the goodness of Jesus. That's good. That's good. Ooh, I just felt like I got saved again. I hey, glory. She did. Glory. I, 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 I'm going to catch me. Glory <laughs> to God. All right. So <laughs> thank you, Kim. Kim, we're so excited to have you. And I wanted to just ask you this because you're going to be performing your single Wonderful um, the night of the show, but you're also a part, you and James are a part of a tribute to Sean Keyes, to Reginald Nicholas Jr., and to Roger Willis. So you're doing another song for that, or uh, part of that song. So talk about that. What, what is your excitement level like? How are you preparing for the show? Oh, my goodness. I am super, super excited about that. Sean Keyes is that dude. He is like the super producer. And to have the opportunity to just present his work 
during this amazing award show. It's absolutely incredible. Through It All is one of my all-time favorite songs that I've had a chance to record. I haven't um, had a chance to really perform it as much as I would, would love to, but what a great opportunity to pay homage to Sean and what an awesome opportunity to introduce people to Kim Person, Through It All, and they'll love it just as much as they love it. I love it. I love it. Thank you, Kim. We're going to talk to you a little, uh, more in uh, just a moment. So we're going to move over to Bishop, the right Reverend Bishop L. Spencer Smith. <laughs> Listen, Bishop, you ain't getting us in trouble with the Lord. We're going to call you what, huh? What's on you, huh? That's what we're going to call you. No, we've seriously. already we, we've already had this discussion. The, those <laughs> titles are not required, please. <laughs> but listen, we're so excited to have you join us. This will be your first time yes. at the Avidity Awards and performing. You're also performing your new single. So tell us a little bit about your new single, what they can expect from the performance, and just your overall excitement for the show. Wow. Um, yes, indeed. I'm telling you, um, this new single, um, Never Forget, uh, That's Who He Is, uh, was produced by Myron Butler. He's producing my entire record. He and uh, Dana Saray and uh, my son, he Jamel Smith, they're producing my entire record for next year. Now or never, we're finally done. I finally laid the, the final vocals. But this is one of the first songs that Myron sent me. And I really wanted it to be reminiscent of the uh, the contemporary gospel back in the 80s when we heard the whinings come in with, if I labor, that kind of bop in your head kind of feel. Um, that I felt that presence needed to be in gospel again. Um, I cut my teeth on that sound and um, uh, casting no aspersions on the current sounds that's out now, but that's the kind of feel that I wanted to do. And so Myron sent that song. He's like, Elle, I think you can really do it. Um, and I, boom, boom, he sent it to me. We, it was just, wow, it just hit really, uh, really on time. He put the mix and the sauce on it. And there it is. But we, the message behind the song, I think, is so very important because af after we've come through these last two and a half, three years, um, mm -hmm. there needs to be a remembrance of the goodness of the Lord. You, we would have all fainted had we not believed to see his goodness. And the, the text in Lamentation says, this I will recall to my mind, therefore will I have hope. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. And so what, what Jeremiah does there is he recogitates all of what God has done. He remembers who God is. And he says, I will never forget because it's in that remembrance that I lay a hold to, to his, his mercies that are new every morning, his compassions that are fail not, and his faithfulness that is great. So this song is really a reminder to never forget who he is and what he's done and uh, uh and carrying that in the whole that's the whole sentiment of the entire project now or never um is the title of the entire project and it just turned out man i i, I we didn't know how it was going to turn out in the in the midst of the, you know the current soundtrack of what gospel sounds like now but it has really been you know getting some great airplay great traction and um I, I really appreciate the opportunity to display that at the Avidy Award. So I can't, I, I'm, I'm excited about it. So can I just say, you want to say why we can't, why we calling you all these titles? Because well, you, you said a word that I wrote down. <laughs> you know, I, I, did, I, did, I didn't trust myself to remember it, so I wrote it down. You said recogitate. I said, huh? Recogitate. Are you serious? Remember. I, Bring it oh, back gosh. to your mind. Mm. Turn it over in your mind. Yes. Yeah, yes. See, <laughs> see, and you wonder why you are the good high supreme elder bishop. Ah, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait, <laughs> wait, wait a minute. We going higher? What are we doing here? Listen, uh, this he, he just rolled it out like it was nothing. I mean, like it was nothing. And I was sitting yeah. here because I tried to count how many syllables was in it. I was like, one, are we two, serious? Three, this is what we going to do five, now. Six, I mean, on the cool, I Googled it, but you know, I wasn't trying to ah! say it. <laughs> I, I googled it like this, just to make sure I was on time. The man of God said recogitate. I said, good God Almighty, where, where does recogitate? <laughs> Hold on, I said, wait a minute, it's got about eight syllables. I was like, let me see, one, Whatever, two, man. Whatever, I had to man. get a sheet of paper. I got a question for you. I got yes, a question for you because you have been on this independent journey for a minute. So yeah. kind of talk about that because here it is. Now we have a platform such as the Avidity Awards where the mm -hmm. independent artist is celebrated in your history. Have you seen that? Actually, no. And 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 I'm, that's why I am. Um, when they told me about it and I got the uh, the invite, I was so honored 
because yeah, it's been since 1995 that I've been an independent artist and um, had about three or four la labels, you know, all, all of those signed to independent deals, although they were, the labels were responsible for uh, distribution. But I think it is important because I think the, the lifeblood of sound gospel music, the soundtrack of gospel lies within the context of the independent artist. Um, we are the last, you know, bastion, if you will, of, of gospel music that we can articulate and sing what we want to sing, how we want to sing it. And so it's that independent artistry that keeps, you know, that keeps the pulse of what gospel used to be, what the future of gospel. It is out of that pool that a lot of major labels begin to pull out of the independent pool. And but but for the most part, we're the ones that really drive it and support gospel. You know, we stay, you know, in this hour of flux that we're in. I think we need to have platforms that give uh, particular credence and celebration to independent artists. It is imperative. Why? Because if we do not, gospel music is going to die. Right. Because, again, I think the freshness of the sound, the the movement, it comes from independent artistry. And um, that, that was one of the things that my mentor, Donald Lawrence, told me when he, when we were at, we did the uh, Family Gospel Choir with Twinkie Clock, Freecher and Twinkie Clock back in the day. And he said, you know, it's good to sign on a label, but if you can maintain your independence, um, it's going to be hard. He was very honest with me. He was like, it's going to be hard. It's going to be difficult. But if you can maintain your independence, you're going to find that, you know, that the, the God will carve out within the industry a need for your voice. And that's, I think, every independent. What Kim said was so powerful that it was her faithfulness. The Bible says the faithful man shall abound in the blessing. And so we set up every independent artist like that. I think the Advocacy Awards, it, you know, it's going to be amazing because that's where we'll have an amalgamation of all of these people that will come in who may not be sponsored by the big guys, but we serve a big God and it's mm -hmm. going to be a big night. And I'm excited about what is going to come from that, not j for the independent artists in particular. And I think we need to say that uh, unabashedly that this is a night to celebrate independent artistry. Exactly, exactly. And and Derek, let me jump in real quick before I give it back to you. Y'all, please, everyone that's in chat or if you're watching us on social media, each and every one of these artists on the screen right now have amazing music. Please support their new music. Please connect with them on social media. That's one of our big drives as part of the Avidity Awards is to make sure we're all supporting each other. I'm so excited to hear, Bishop, that you're working with my brother, Brother Myron Butler, one of the greatest to Amazing. do it. So excited to hear that, but please, everyone, connect with everybody. Go like, share everything that they're posting. Let's support one another. All right, brother, right. I'll give it back to you. Well, listen, we're gonna take a pause for the cause, first of all, uh, Bishop Supreme High Elder Smith, <laughs> I just want you to know you also said Bastion, and I just wanted to write that down because I've added that to my vocabulary list for this week. Whatever, man. And everybody knows me knows I I have a pretty extensive vocabulary, but you know these two <laughs> words were not in mine, so I just want you to understand tonight. You have helped me. I have what? recorded these down, and these will go Derek, into the hall. This of fame. is what we're doing. This, yes, is, this is what, what we're, we're going to do tonight. <laughs> praise God. I, I want the saints to know that I learned two new vocabulary words thanks to Bishop Elson. <laughs> oh my God! Hilarious. <laughs> Oh my goodness, man. All right. It's called studying. It's called studying. Yes, I, I get you. I got you, Bishop. So listen, we want to shout out to some people in the church chat. Shout out to my, my aunt, Bishop Arventure Jones Jr. is in the chat. Thank you. I saw your message, Bishop. Thank you so much. I appreciate and love you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, Monique, Miss Monique, y'all. I call her the voice of South Georgia. <laughs> so thank her for being here as well. She's going to be at the Avidity Awards this year. And Bishop Sam Samuel McGill, the third, you guys, of the stellar award-winning All Nations Radio is here with us tonight. My brother from another mother, Michael Sneed, who is a prolific songwriter and singer and key organist in his own right, is here as well. Super producer Sean Keys, Montre Tisdale. Man, it's a lot of people here, and a lot of them are going to be here. And I want to say this too, Montre and Valika B of uh, Set Apart and Chosen will be joining us on the red carpet this year as well. So. Y'all, all the stars, 
are going to be there. So, you know, if you're not there, you're just going to be missing it. All right. I just want you to know you're going to be missing if you are not there. Carmino, you can feel what? Well, I have a question because we oh. keep somehow y'all keep referring to this young man as a super producer, but I can't get an intro or outro or extra. I can't get I, two chords. I can't get nothing. I mean, maybe I'm not big enough for five keys. I don't. I don't know. I just listen, I, Carmina. I have nothing to do with that. I need you take that up with the super producer. That has nothing to do with me. All right. Please, that's. So I, I, okay, well, that's fine. Shout out to Tawanda Shelley. <laughs> so good to see her. My sis, good to see you. Carlos Hale, Trina Moore. My mom is here. Tanya Givens is here. All of you guys are in the chat. Thank you all for so much. Uh, hey, Sean said he's waiting on you, Carmina. So for whatever I, that's worth. Okay, well, we shall see. All right, so we're going to take a pause and we're going to come back and do some more interviews and talk to these wonderful performers that are going to be joining us on October the 14th. But listen, this commercial spot, y'all, I need y'all to hear it, all right? So this is one of two. We have a second one second one that is um, being created literally as we speak. But we had two versions because there's so many of y'all. I wanted to make sure everybody got included. And so there's only 60 seconds in, in the commercial, right? So we had to do two to make sure we got everybody in. But this is the first one. And so here it is. We're going to play it for y'all, right? <sighs> 7th Annual Avidity Awards, presented by Avidity TV, Friday, October 14th at 7 p.m. at Hollerin Center, 225 South Main Street, Memphis, Tennessee, with performances by L. Spencer Smith, Lamont Sanders, Dr. James Mabel Jr., Along with Robin McGee, Courtney Franklin, Michael Dixon, Cardell Booker, Marchetta Parker, Maurice Griffin, Zach Landry, and more. Tickets start at $40. For tickets and more info, visit theavidityawards.com. That's theavidityawards.com. Hosted by Aldrin McCuller of the Aldrin Brand and Marquise Jelks of Church Stuff. Get your tickets now. Y'all heard the man. Get your tickets now. All right. It's going down. The biggest night in independent gospel music is going down in Memphis, Tennessee. You don't want to miss this for anything. I'm telling you right now. So for all of our other artists that hear your name on this one, we have the second one being produced. And it, I should have it tonight sometime. And you guys will hear it. We're going to be posting this one to, uh, tonight on social media as well as on our website. And, of course, it will start going on radio this weekend. So uh, thank you all so much. Everybody that's in the Memphis market, again, shout out to Tracy Pate, who's been an absolute godsend. Um, I, I have to say this because. Uh, she has been in constant communication with me. Um, she as the president of the Memphis Gospel Industry uh, Network as partnering with us for our Saturday event. But she has gone on out to help us and make connections and inroads there in the city of Memphis. And I want really to thank her so much for her support and also for her support on um, Hallelujah FM there in Memphis, um, the iHeart family and those clusters of stations. So thank you, Tracy. But they we love you. We appreciate you so much. All right. So listen, y'all heard the spot, right? Did that make y'all excited? You know, kind of give you a little juice. Be like, wait a minute. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to James Mabel, Dr. James Mabel Jr. And uh, Dr. Dr. Mabel, are you excited when you heard that spot? You know, we heard your song, a little bit of your song in that thing. What's up, man? Hey, man. Definitely excited, man. Uh, you know, as my uh, mama always used to tell me and still tells me, people don't have to be kind or nice. And so when they do stuff for you and include you and those types of things, it's just good sense to say thank you, man. So, no, I am absolutely excited about it, man, and I uh, cannot wait. Absolutely, absolutely, man. We're excited that you're going to be with us. So your new single, you know, you're fresh off of your number one single on Billboard Gospel Indicator, which was It Shall Pass, and you're also doing that as a part of the tribute to Sean Keyes, Reginald Nicholas Jr., and Roger Willis. So, Talk about your excitement. How are you preparing for the show and that performance? Performance is, I should say. Well, yeah, I mean, you 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 giving me a good reason to sweat, you know. And so uh, I'm excited, man. No, it's it's amazing to be able to again uh, just share your music. As Kim was just stating, um, it's it's been a journey, you know. And to have this opportunity, I don't take it for granted. Uh, for those who are 
you know, not familiar with me. I mean, I'm just literally a walking miracle. And so to be at this moment uh, in my life right now, is just an absolute blessing uh, after being paralyzed for a year and a half uh, while walk, uh, working on my PhD, uh, rolling in a wheelchair, not having the ability to walk. Um, but God healed me. Uh, and every day I wake up, I look at it as a reminder that I still have work to do uh, and, and sharing in his kingdom. And so to have the opportunity to uh, to do It Shall Pass, of course, written by the super producer, Carmina, the super producer himself, you know, and produced, <laughs> you know, by Sean Keyes and written by by executive producer, Pastor Dale Jackson of Houston, Texas, to have that that opportunity to uh, to, to pay homage to him. And just how that song came to be was just amazing. Um, and, and when Daryl sent that song over and said, hey, man, create this scratch idea. And it came back, was like, OK, this it. Right. Uh, and then just to, to, to share the testimony behind the song, you know, two weeks after we recorded it, uh, Pastor Daryl's wife was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer. And so the first line in the song, whatever you're going through in your life, God wants you to know it's going to be all right. You know, uh, sometimes God will make you lean on the, uh, the words of your own pen as you go through this thing called life. So. Uh, I'm, I'm, man, I'm just, I'm just grateful um, for this platform. And uh, Derek, you didn't, you did not have to do this, but God has laid this thing on your heart and has given you the mm -hmm. vision, and obviously the provision as you have stepped out to be a blessing to uh, the country, man. And so I'm honored. I mean, I'm, I hate to be kind of biased, but you are my radio promoter, you know, so I'm grateful for that. And I thank God for just, you know, the partnership and just the, the push and the encouragement, man, that you have provided unto me. And, uh, and it's going to be a dope night, but I'm going to have to definitely, you go, I don't know how far the sets are between my <laughs> performance of Lord, you are good. It's separate. It's okay. got a good space. Bitch. I need I, yeah. I got to bring some water. I'm, yeah. I'm a yeah. on, I gotta, you know, <laughs> <laughs> gotta gotta you know get myself together now. But man, I'm excited and grateful for what Lord Your Good is doing. I mean, listen, crack the top fifty and we're we're rolling. And so, just thankful for what's, what everything is going on. Well, listen, we're glad to have you, and I'm looking forward to this tribute, especially because I think those three men that we're going to be honoring are 100 deserving. And a lot of people don't know. I think we're the first award show to have a specific category for mastering engineer. Um, we know they're mentioned in, um, they're kind of, usually mastering is kind of lumped in with some of the other categories. Um, but this is the first that I'm aware of, um, to do that. And so we want to keep pioneering things like that. So shout out again to Roger Willis, to Reginald Nicholas Jr. And to Sean Keyes representing the triad, I call it, uh, producer, production, mixing, and mastering. Um, I, how many of us know? I know all of y'all as artists understand this very well, that without a great mix, first of all, without a great producer, <laughs> a great mixing engineer, and a great mastering engineer, what we all enjoy on the radio and on the DSPs cannot will not be to the level that we get to enjoy it on. So I know it's fitting, and it's just right to make yeah. sure that we honor this. And I think those three men kind of will stand in proxy for all of the wonderful producers and uh, mixing engineers and mastering engineers out there that are doing great work every day. And all of us know Roger pretty much touched half the songs in gospel as far as his mastering is concerned. It's, his list is long, major indie alike. So anyway, we're excited about that. But I want to bring in, we got uh, Todd B of uh, Half Mile Home is with us tonight. So uh, Todd, go ahead and come off mute if you don't mind, sir. And uh, welcome tonight to this hey. broadcast and to the show and welcome to the show. So Tell us about your uh, what you guys are going to be doing the night of the show. Uh, hey, y'all. First and foremost, it's going tonight. I ain't going to lie. <laughs> <It's going> already. <laughs> I came here really like, oh, man, it's going. What? Yeah. <laughs> hey, listen. So uh, Half Mile Home, uh, we got a new, we, we got a new, it's not a new single, but it's a single that's been out that we're pushing. And it's, it's, it's titled Closet. And uh, unfortunately, we um, some of you may know, some of you may not know that we lost one of our lead singers in the midst of all of this, uh, Dave uh, Ready Rider Felder. So, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of a bittersweet moment for even at the Stellar Awards, you know, people were like, I'm so glad to see you. I'm like, yeah, man, but you know, <laughs> it's kind of sad for us anyway. However, moving forward, um, we're going to do everything we can to uh, to lift our brother and his family and prayers and, you know, David Felder, y'all may not know him, but he's been with us for a long time. And, you know, to lose him 
is to lose a lot for us. You know what I mean? So, um, so I wanted to get that piece out of the way. Um, but anyway, closet closet is a song that talks about the um, <clears throat> Matthew six and six. When you go into the prayer closet, you you pray to God in secret, and God will He will reward you openly. So that's what we talk about in closet, and, and that comes from uh, again many of you may not may know may not know, but. I lost a son in 2016, and ever since then, I've been an advocate for gun violence. Uh, Y'all know that there's a lot of uh, urban, in the urban communities, a lot of the young people, you know, they kind of, you know, gunning down each other. And and so for me, I feel a need, we, we felt a need to try to help that situation. And so we we often go, uh, go into the uh, streets and we talk to these brothers about what's going on and you know, and try to encourage them to uh, uh, kind of listen and, and kind of take heed to what we're saying about the closet. Because I know for me, the only way we're going to make a difference and make a change in this world is through prayer. You know what I mean? And Absolutely. we went a step further and uh, God allowed me to be able to use my company. And we shot a movie based upon that as well. It's all or nothing. So y'all will see that here real soon, uh, probably in October. It's called It's All or Nothing starring Omar Gooden and a lot of other uh, other good people, but listen, that is our goal: is to try to save one life of these young brothers. You know what I mean? That's my mission, that's my purpose, and I just want to do that because, listen, if you lose a child, then you'll understand how serious it is, and you'll start to be, hold on, man, let me wait a minute. I don't want to see somebody go through what I went through. So that's my that's my goal, that's my drive, that's my purpose. Well, Todd, listen, man, uh, first of all, condolences on the loss. And I know, you know, that has to be tough to try to soldier on, you know, after losses like that. But I want to commend you, man, for, uh, you know, continuing on with the vision, but also for the work that you're doing, trying to advocate for gun violence prevention. Um, I think it's something that's very needed. And so I just want to salute you on that, man. And we're looking forward to you guys taking the stage on October the 14th. I can't wait. Listen, (laughs) I'm down. When I tell y'all it, it's it's going down, we it's, it's gonna happen. When when Auntie when uh, when uh, Auntie Trina told me, "Hey Ty, we're gonna do the avatar." I said, "Man, listen, say less, let's go." I can't wait to see all of y'all beautiful faces, man. I can't wait to meet y'all in person. I see Carmina on there. Listen, she's been a great supporter of us for such a long time. Love that lady. Uh, uh, but listen, Derek, listen. Let me tell you something. We are we are so in tune with what we got to do. Uh, at this award, because I do understand, um, although, um, you know, a lot of people are like, but Ty, y'all ain't independent no more. I'm like, yes, we are. We still independent because just because I got a distribution deal, we still independent, period. Yeah. I'll be like, no, nah, man, we still independent. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I can't wait again to get down and worship with y'all, have a good time and strut across the stage and shout and cry. And we're going to, you know, a little bit of snot here and there, you know, <laughs> Now listen. Now I'm just saying, if you're gonna snot tie, get your rag and just put it over the mic a little oh, bit. Oh no, 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 no! I, 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 <laughs> and listen, you know when you're praying, right? You know when you're praying. And I don't know if y'all remember when we was younger, and they and and the preacher say, just keep saying Jesus, 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 I got you. Well, now, I, now that you've told me this, Todd, I'm gonna make sure that my staff has some, some Kleenex off the, off the stage. You know, we run out there. We we gonna help y'all. We, we gonna look out for you. We gonna look out I'll for you. Bro. I'll, I'll um, be the armor bearer. I'll be the armor yeah. bearer for half my home. I got you. Know, you. I yeah, got she got you. you. She got you. I got you. Thank you, sir. But Todd. We're excited again, man. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it. So let's talk to Courtney, Pastor Courtney Franklin. Listen, Courtney, you are our Memphis connection on the show this year. And as a son of Memphis, tell us what this means. First of all, to have the Avidity Awards come to Memphis, but also what what you're excited about and the song that you're going to be presenting the night of the show. Sure. Well, first of all, thank you for having me on. Thank you, Carmina, for playing my song again. I am excited to be amongst this great conglomerate of artists. Uh, uh, Bishop has been my friend for a long time. So again, I'm excited about his number one song. I watched Dr. Mabel be number one on the Gospel Indicator charts. I watched Kim. I passed by Kim in on the red carpet at the Stellas this year as a new artist. I watched Lamont on the emerging stage. So I'm excited to be 
here with everyone. All right. So I am a Memphis homeboy born and raised. I think it's going to be absolutely fabulous that the Avidity Awards is coming to Memphis. Uh, Rhythm of Gospel started here and uh, it moved on. Praise the Lord. So we thank God that somebody is coming in uh, to uphold a standard of excellence and celebrate independent artists. I am going to be singing a song that I penned entitled uh, Send Us Peace. So I want you to, it's a groove. I can't sing like Bishop Smith, but I'm gonna try to do the best I can to groove it out. And uh, we're gonna have fun that night. And I'm looking forward to hearing everyone here, Marchetta. I'm looking forward to hearing your music and celebrating you and honoring you. So I just, I just love when we all get together. What a time, what a time. Yes, indeed, Pastor Courtney. So coming to Memphis, you're representing Memphis that night of the show and a wonderful song, which I've actually heard and loved. So we're excited to have you join us as well, man. So we're going to talk to you a little bit more in a moment. Sure. We're going to move over real quick to Lamont Sanders. Good, Lamont. good evening. Good evening, sir. <laughs> well, first of all, congratulations on how well the song is doing. Um, he Kept Me is uh, just killing on the uh, Billboard Gospel Air, mm -hmm. National Airplay chart. And uh, I believe you were number one on the indicator chart at one point. Did I get that correct? Thank you so much. Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't even know. You telling me something I don't know. I know that my last single was number four. I don't know. If, I don't know if this one made number one on Indicator. It did. Thank you. They know. Okay. I was like, <laughs> yes, I, thought I, I thought I remember seeing it. <laughs> yes. Yes, it did. Um, I'm like, did? But that was yeah. Yes. 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 So thank you so much. Um, and it, it's all. This whole thing has really been such a blessing. Well, let me talk to you because you were like, uh, I think it was referenced earlier that on the Stellar Awards, and I want to put this out there. I don't have an issue at all talking about another award show because, frankly, I stand on the shoulders of Mr. Don Jackson, uh, what the work that Central City Productions have put in over 37 years. And um, I think sometimes, you know, I know this is kind of usually an unspoken thing or in radio. It's like, you don't, you don't talk about the competition. You don't talk about the other people because <laughs> you want them to stay with you. Um, but I've always felt like God told me specifically, he said, I'm going to call you a creative because you will always create. Um, he said, there are basically two types of people. There are creatives and there are competitors, right? Mm. Competitors are always saying, what's left or, you know, a sense of urgency because we got to fight over this little bit left. He said, but creators are always creating what's next. And he told me, he said, if you, if you keep the mind of a creative, I'll always put you in a position that you will create the things that the competitors will fight over. And so I said, okay, so cool. I'm, I'm with that. So I say that to say this, we we're giving love and, and, and evoking the name of the Stellar Awards tonight because I, I believe they are the gold standard in our gospel industry. And there's no question about that. So I bring that up to say this, um, Lamont, you had a wonderful appearance um, on the Emerging Artist Stage at the Stellars this year, and you did a fantastic job. And so we're we're excited, though, on our stage, we get to hear the whole song on our stage, praise God. So I'm excited about that, man. But um, tell us about the song, He Kept Me, and like its significance to you and why it's so important. Well, before I say that, if you don't mind, let me just say that um, I've been blessed to watch the Avidity, the Avidity Awards grow to where it is now. Um, and, and it's so interesting that God would allow me to do, to share that platform. But last year, I wanted to be on the Avidity Awards. I wanted to perform on that stage. Like, when I tell you that was like, I'm like, wow, the Avidity, I'm performing on the Avidity next year. And I, I spoke it and I could not wait to be on the biggest night of independence. I need y'all to hear me good, hear me real good. And what, what God has given you, Derek, and I and Carmina, and I appreciate you guys, is that because Stella has what they have, no one has really taken an award show to really look at the end. Like, this is so necessary. So it's not like it's competition of which, show, it's, it's an extension. It's like, listen, we couldn't get that night, get like, when I tell you it's like one, to me it's perfect. Even the timing of it, it's like take a couple months off. Now here's the biggest night of independent 
artist and I love it. When I tell you, it's like, this right here is the reunion. This is where the reunion is at. Cause you know, it's a lot, it's a lot that goes on Stellar Week, you know? This yeah. is like family hugging. I just can't wait, you know what I'm saying? But um, he kept me. Bro, I tell you, um, when, I, when I first, the first time I did, he kept me. Um, it was a song that I heard from a producer friend of mine. And because of the, 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 the prodigal son, the, the life that I kind of lived with the R&B for a couple of years, being sound baby face, Andre Harrell. And when you do that type of music, a lot comes along with that. And people don't understand that it's, it's a dangerous, it's a dangerous world. <laughs> so it's a real dangerous world. And I, you know, I got into some trouble with the law and my, my testimony goes on and on and on. And when I first heard the song, I'm like, he kept me because I didn't see one day of jail time. Now, I was charged with some things, but never set behind the jail walls. God made a way that I didn't have to, you know, do any time. I had to just be on my best behavior, which is when you're a church boy, you know how to be on your best behavior. Go sit down somewhere. <laughs> Stop trying to act like you're somebody you're not. Okay. So long story short, I had heard the song and it was enough for me in that retrospect of the song. I got with Uncle Freddie, he said, nah, I need deeper lyrics for you. It's something deeper. It's more than just what you're hearing. I need you to re rewrite it. So we rewrote the record. Man, little did I know that I would lose my brother to the first 4,000 with COVID. So now he kept me, I didn't want to do music no more. I'm just be honest with you. I was just like, I couldn't open my mouth. I couldn't find the words to say, to sing. And I was down for about nine to 10 months. And then somebody asked me to do, you know, do praise and worship at their church. And as an, as a, as a musician, you say, okay, I'll go encourage the other people. I'll get up enough to encourage them. But little did I know it was the strengthening of ministering every Sunday that started to give me my, you know, and then the word that he kept me started playing in my mind again. Now we're like, okay, let's release the single. So God, you're keeping me in this bad place. I lost my younger brother. I couldn't protect him from this COVID. You know, as an older brother, somebody mess with your brother, you want to, you know, that's, that's, that's what we're supposed to do, protect our baby brothers and sisters. I could not protect him. And we couldn't get to the hospital to see him. He's on oxygen. We're getting a phone call. Like, when I tell you it was just a bad place and a bad, bad place to lose someone that you can't get to and feel like they die alone in the hospital because everything, you know, you really couldn't get like that thing destroyed everything in me, you know? So God had to be my keeper. He had to, he had to get me to a place that it was no longer just music or just words. It, it, it had to become something that was inside of me. So long story short, 18 months later, my mom goes home. My sister said, will you stop telling people that God kept you? I'm like, I can't because he, he's still going to keep us. With mom going, with your brother going, no matter what we've all lost over the last two or three years, he's still a keeper. So that thing has become such a personal testimony. And, and, and you know, I try not to think about it when I'm on stage because it's, it's, it can hit different. <laughs> I try to say, okay, get through the song, get through the song, you know. So, man, he, he kept me, I, I mean it from the bottom, from the bottom of my feet, like, I'm nothing without him, you know what I'm saying? We're nothing without him. When we sit and have our own little time by ourselves, and we think about all the things that God has brought us through and the things that he's gonna get us through, I believe now he can get us through anything. I I'm seeing it, I'm like, okay, God, my mother? You, that's, the, that's my heart, that's my heartbeat. You know, even me pursuing music was because of my mother. So now even to get where I am now doesn't even feel right without her, but I'm reminded because my mother was about ministry, that it, it really is still about her because it's about ministry. And even the doors God has opened up, man, when I tell you from, from Stella's to whatever, I know it's my mom and God. They are up there doing the one, two punch. And all I got to do is just seek his face, stay humble and just give God what's owed to him. And that's praise. Every day I wake up, I say, he kept me. He kept me. Another day I wake up. Thank you, God. He kept me. So Bro, I'm I'm honored to be on this stage. Every time I if I can share this song, it's an honor and a privilege to tell somebody about God's grace and his mercy. And he's keeping us. He's keeping us. And it's not a game. Real talk. He's keeping us.
So thank well, you guys right. for having me, man. He can, so now, Carmina, he done made me want to cry. So now I got to go get some tissue. So I'm going to let you take over and interview the next person because I got to go find some, a box of Kleenex right quick. Because the law, but he keeping me. I don't want, I'm not defeated. I just want y'all to, I'll be a kept. He'll keep you if you want to be kept. Praise God. No, I'm just playing. So, Lamont, man, thank you so much. And we, listen, we're excited that you are here with us. First of all, this is not your first time at the Avidities, but this is your first time performing. And we just appreciate you, man, and uh, so excited. And through all of your testimony and what that means, I just, one of the things I personally love about the song, and it's in my playlist, because it is one of those kind of songs that cuts deep in terms of how it ministers to people. It's not just a song that sounds good and has a great, uh, you know, lead vocal, but it's it just really ministers. So thank you. Uh, shout out again on that. Carmina, go ahead and talk to the next person. Who we got next? <laughs> And I love that song, bro. You know I love that song. So I'm so godly proud of you and just everything that's coming with it because it's so well-deserved. I mean, such an amazing man of God. So proud of you, Lamont. Proud, proud, proud. Thank you so Next, much. we got to go to Marchetta. Because <laughs> Marchetta Parker said, he is more than enough. That's what she said. Have y'all heard the new single? Yes. Yes. More Than Enough. More Than Enough. Beautiful song and definitely something that is very timely. Now, Marsha, to talk to the people, we had a chance to chit chat, but we're going to let the people get to know who you are. You have been blessed to minister and sing for many, many years, but you're an independent artist. Talk about making that choice, because some people feel like if I don't run, go get on the label, I just can't do this. I'm, I'm not going anywhere. It's just not going to happen. But you've made a conscious choice. Now to talk about it for you. Yeah, I actually um, did. I probably am, was one of the reluctant uh, artists in the beginning. Um, it was kind of one of those things where everybody else had vision for you. You're the worship leader. You should be doing this, this. And it kind of started out that way. But then the Lord woke me up one morning and said, this is because um, I would always say, well, I don't sound like this or I don't do this like that. And God said, no, your voice is for the people, you have a breaker anointing on your voice and I need you <laughs> to go out and record it. And so my reluctance had to flee. And then I had to say, okay, Lord, not my will, but your will be done. And so it's kind of one of those things where I heard, you know, God, once the Lord gives you the vision for it, he will provide the provision. And like you said, it's not cheap when you're an independent artist. But if you know that you're doing the will of God, then you know that it is done for the purpose. And if one person is blessed, if one person is healed, if one person is set free, if one person decides I'm not going to commit suicide because your son touched me, then I've done what I was supposed to do. So it didn't matter what the sacrifice was. It didn't matter because I was obedient to the will of the Lord. And I believe that as an independent artist, you really have to know that you're walking in the will of God because otherwise you're just putting money out there and you're just doing something for the sake of, you know, I'm not doing it for fame. I'm not doing it for fortune. I really am doing it because this is what the Lord told me to do. And if, like I said, if, if one person has been touched by the music, then I've done what I was supposed to do. And when I talk about God being more than enough, you know that I am speaking from a place of testimony. It's not just something I made up and I, you know, just came up with off the top of my head because I thought it was going to be catchy or I thought, you know, oh, this might be cool for radio. No, it wasn't even that. It was, this is what God gave me for now. And this is what Marchetta is presenting, you know, to the world. And, you know, that's what the song more than enough. And what I got an opportunity and I'm so honored to be at the Avity Awards, but to be able to minister that, you know, this is ministry for me. And so I am always honored in every opportunity that I have to minister the word of God through song, because that's what my ministry is. It's just the word of God and it is in song. And, you know, the Lord told me when I was in my early twenties, that music would always be a place of refuge and a place of strength for me. And so then he then made that my own ministry. So I, you know, I'm thankful and I'm honored and I believe that I'm just doing the will of the Lord. So I'm just, you know, honored to be a part. I love it. I love it. And I got to say this again, for those that have just joined the chat, or if you're just tuning in online, 
please, I encourage you, support each and every one of these amazing artists. They all have wonderful music that will, it will impact your life. I, I, I can honestly say that from my heart. I'm not just one that just plays the music just for the show. This is music that I love. This is music that gets me through. So I encourage you, my friends, support these amazing artists, even James Mabel. Y'all, now, honestly, I love James' new single. I love that new single. And I pray <laughs> that he hear it at the Avidity Awards. I pray he make it so y'all can hear this new single at the Avidity Awards. But if he don't, it's available online for download. But if he make it, because he going to sing it with such conviction, y'all got to see him do it live. I pray he make it. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> All yeah, right, on that note, right, <laughs> you, you know, you know, Carmina a little special, y'all. <laughs> no, but seriously, um, I, listen, I'm so excited. I gotta take uh, a pause for the cause and just recognize the people again that have come in the church chat over here. We got Ebony Funderburk, y'all. Shout out to Ebony. What's going on, girl? Uh, we got Project Purvis. He said he's going to be good tonight, Carmina. We'll see how that holds up. Shout out to Marie Brown, Pastor Daryl Jackson, Patricia Beckworth Nelson, uh, all of you guys. Thank you so much for joining tonight. We appreciate it. If you haven't already, please love this video and share it uh, on your timelines. We'd really, really appreciate that. So, again, everybody, this is the countdown to the 7th Annual Avidity Awards. It's happening October the 14th in Memphis, Tennessee at the Halloran Center for Performing Arts and Education in downtown Memphis. And listen, it is going to be an amazing time, all right? We got the lights, we got the camera, we got the action, the stage manager, script, all of that. But listen, all we need now is you. We have these amazing performers that are here. Last night, we talked to the other half of the performing, uh, performing core, and now tonight we have other halves. So we want y'all to join us and make sure that you are a part. Also need to get this shout out in right quick. We have our pre-show hosts are gonna be the amazing Hassan James, of Root Magazine and the brand new Root Indie Magazine, which I am proud to say is the official magazine of the Avidity Awards going from now and going forward. What an amazing, groundbreaking thing this is. Um, and I'll talk more about that momentarily. But we also have the singing Michelle Prather and our own Dr. James Maple Jr. So listen, it's gonna be amazing. The pre-show, you don't wanna miss it. The tickets are only $10. Get those tickets. And then, of course, on the main stage and the main show, our hosts are Aldrin McCullough and Marquise Jelk. So y'all don't want to miss that. It's going to be funny. It's going to be a great time. And we're just going to have an awesome, awesome night. The biggest night of independent gospel music. We need you to be there. All right. Make sure you are there. Also, if you are a member of media, make sure that you hit up Carmina Barnett, our director of media and or hit up Benita Bellamy Kelly, who's doing PR for us this year. Shout out to the Bellamy Group um, doing our publicity. So make sure that you hit her up, uh, either uh, Carmina or Benita, and they will get you your media credentials. So now we want you to be credentialed now. We don't want you coming there with your iPhone and you ain't got no credentials. Make sure you got your credentials, praise God. Now you can bring your iPhone, just make sure you got a credential. Glory <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, uh, if you want to get media credentials, you can go to our website, theavidityawards.com. And I thought I had my banner scrolling, so I'm going to turn that on here so you all can see that. But definitely go on the website and get that information. If you want to sponsor, if you want to place an ad in the ad book, if you want to be a vendor, uh, be a part of our vendor marketplace. It's going to be, listen, the Halloran Center has an amazing foyer and lobby. Plenty for the vendors. So vendors, we're looking for you. Shout out to the ones that have already signed up. And if he, if you want to sell some product artists, if you want to sell your book, come on, glory to God. This is going to be a good night. We are anticipating a, a sold out show that night. So we need to make sure everybody uh, gets in there and you get your products or, and, or services seen by the masses. Now, Carmina, I wanted to talk about something really quick. I'm going to pivot real quick before we go back to the interviews. I wanted to talk about um, this year, I really wanted to put a big emphasis on mental health awareness, not only in the black community, but in the black church and in black Christian music uh, or gospel music, because we all, especially those of us that grew up, I grew up in the grand old church of God in Christ tradition and Baptist. But, you know, a lot of times we were told in Pentecostalism, especially, now oh, you just need to cast the devil out. I'm like, no, man, of God, sometimes some kind of come out through fasting and prayer and other things come out by sitting on this couch and talking to somebody that got some sense. And that's licensed to help you deal with your psychological issues. But in all seriousness, 
uh, I want to shout out to Charles Winton there in the Memphis area, who we are honoring um, that night as well. And um, we are doing a heavy, heavy focus and emphasis on mental health awareness. He'll be there talking about that that night. But we're not just going to do it at the show. We're going to be doing this ongoing. It's going to be an initiative that we are launching the night of the Avidity Awards. There's just a lot of new firsts that are happening that particular night. So we definitely want you guys to come out and be a part of the biggest night in independent gospel music. And we're not just saying that we're saying it because we mean it. And we are, we're putting our money where our mouth is. We're putting our, our work where our mouth is. We're putting everything there out on the table for you. And so we want you guys to come out and make sure that you come and enjoy the show. So you know, I'm really glad you said that because what we just went through, what the world has just experienced, I don't care how prayed up you are. It messed with you. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, Absolutely. some of us lost people. Unfortunately, some of us were isolated. Unfortunately, our world changed. So we can no longer be embarrassed or afraid, if you will, to talk about our mental health. We have to take it serious. We have to take steps to make sure we're doing whatever we need to be OK. Yes, by all means, pray, but pray and take action. That's all we're asking you to do is pray and take action. So I'm really glad you created that initiative. And it's not just for now, like Derek said, this is going forward. This is something that the Avidity Awards, Avidity Promotions, everything will be behind to really make sure we're taking care of ourselves. So I'm really excited about that. Absolutely. And Carmina, something else groundbreaking is happening at the show that night. We are launching Avidity TV for the fall. So it's all original content and programming that we're going to have as part of our uh, web-based uh, subscription service, which ultimately will phase over into television. Um, I'm in talks right now with some TV uh, partners to bring the show, not only the show to, to TV, but also all of our other content and programming. Um, listen, everything that we're doing at Avidity TV uh, from that perspective is dealing with um, helping independent artists get exposure. What I my vision for the show is that ultimately it becomes like a launching pad of careers. It's kind of like when you take our stage, then the high visibility will help launch these careers to where they really need to go, getting them substantial uh, increase. And I know a lot of us saw this, especially those of us that are really watching this in the industry side, watching how when MRC put out that uh, data where it was shown over the last 10 years, gospel has had a precipitous decline in market share. And I want to be on the front lines of helping to change that narrative because here's what we do know. We know that those in the gospel community, whether it be on the ministry or the industry side, spend a substantial amount of money in the economy globally and nationally. So what that says to me is not that there is a lack of increase or finance, it's, it's direction and understanding how to speak to audiences more broadly. So Avidity TV will not just have Christian programming, we will have other programming as well. But the whole intent is to bring that, I, we're talking about the wealth of the wicked is later for the righteous, but not if we don't know how to make inroads in those communities. Ain't nobody gonna say amen. So I'll say it. And I'm not afraid to do that, right? Because what I understand, I'll never forget this, a real quick story. I remember when Donald Lawrence, I was at a um, EMI gospel uh, reception one year um, during the Stellar Award weekend. And I'll never forget, um, Billboard flew in to give him a presentation. I believe at that time, he was the only producer of any genre at that time that had, I think, multiple number ones uh, uh, out of any genre. So anyway, they flew in. And when he was giving his speech, he talked about when uh, gospel didn't really receive him in the beginning and he had a hard time and people thought his music was weird and they didn't want to give him a chance. And so he ended up going to go be Stephanie Mills's uh, music director. And he said that over there was where he learned tours, touring and lighting and all of those concepts that he was able to bring back to Tri-City. And he said, you know, and the thing that stuck with me, he said, don't judge a person's journey because you never know how God will use that journey to bless the kingdom. And so what I appreciated that night, and it still stuck with me, that's had to have been over 10 years ago when I heard him say this, but it stuck with me. And I want to do the same thing with Avidity TV and every platform that we have to help advance the gospel, because I love all genres of music, but gospel is by far my favorite. And I think gospel deserves a more prominent placement um, across all mediums. And so that's part of the, the, the goal and the vision that I have. So I just want everybody to know when you support this vision, you're not just supporting the show itself, but you're supporting the entire apparatus that we think we're going to be able to use and deploy successfully in the marketplace to help give higher visibility to gospel artists, 
gospel communities and gospel initiatives. So just wanted to put that in there. All right. So, uh, Carmina, who are we going to talk to next? <laughs> I think it's time to quartet a spell. That's what I All feel right. like. Let's go. Yeah, let's. I like quartet. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> so the exciting Holy Sons, who, if you have not heard their music, you owe it to yourself to support their amazing music. I love, so let me just go and say this, Saints. Uh, Derek just found out about Quartet yesterday. I've been oh, there. Don't do that. Now, man, been, guys, you got your, he got his, his, his wife beat on in the shot. Praise God. We I mean, let, let, him be, let him be fine for Jesus. He all right. He all right. He was fine for Jesus. You just got, did he just get through saying don't judge? And then there you go. Did y'all see it? Y'all saw it in real time. Did y'all see that? I wasn't ready, woman of God. I wasn't ready. I'm sorry. I wasn't ready. I just got to be honest. Stream yard is just like the church. It say, come as you are. <laughs> no, that is my brother. No, I love Jay. No, I want to say I love Jay. That's my dude. But that, that I wasn't ready. I just got to be honest. All right, so we're back on track. We're talking to, we got Brother Pastor here he because he got a whole shirt on. And look, he in front of the Bible. Look, he got the Bible behind him. Yes, praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. Pastor, how you doing today? <laughs> uh oh, you got to unmute. All right, all right, I'm off mute. I'm off mute. There you go. How you praise doing God. tonight? Praise God. I'm glad that you guys could hear me. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's an honor to be here. Uh, I'm usually the, the, the pointed spokesperson anyway uh, for uh, for our ministry uh, uh, quartet that, that God has privileged us to do. Let me just say we really, really appreciate Brother Derek Huggins for just giving us the privilege to be a part of this amazing event, allowing the Holy Sons to be groundbreaking as it pertains to being the first quartet group to grace the stage and and just you know received the awesome award that we, we received last year and we're excited about this year and and gracing the stage we're going to be you know ready and available so that memphis which is a, a, a place where we, we have much family we're just going to be at home and do what we do man and just enjoy god and let god do what he do to let y'all know that quartet ain't just about slapping your hip right. and, and, and you know but we are also worshipers man that we came from that foundation and, and if you if we if, if you give us a little time we'll take you right in <laughs> i love it because that's what god has given us you know we understand very importantly the biblical grace that is on our lives and so we just go ahead and just give god the best that we have but we just happen to have very strong roots with a third generation of quartet singers in our family so we just, uh, we just, we, it's in our blood and we just do it. But again, man, we just, we, we just thank God for this opportunity. Uh, you know, this is an amazing event. Uh, I, Brother, Brother Huggins, just, you know, and your staff, man, you guys are just did an amazing job. And I just thank God for the opportunity to be a part of it. So, hey, the Holy Son, man, is here. Uh, you know, I get a chance to talk because I'm, I'm the writer. I write more, all of the music, most of the music, and I write, and, uh, and I have the privilege to to executive produce our last project that was released in November, uh, finally live project that you all you were just talking about, and uh, we just thank God for that. And so you know they put they they always you know allow me to talk. They can't stop me because I'm a preacher. You can't stop preachers from talking. <laughs> I know. But, <laughs> but but amen again. We're just we're just honored, man. It's honored honored to be able to be trailblazers at this for this amazing event and uh man we're just excited so hey that, that let's do it let's and pastor two well, things for you real quick can you tell us how long have you guys been together and then also you're single your lead single that you're going to be blessing us with there at the avidity award share that with us oh man we've been together for over 30 years uh most of these guys started singing when they were kids I'm talking seven years old. Some of the youngest ones, we did our very first recording on a local label here in Chicago when some of those guys were seven years old. Uh, and um, uh, So it's been about 30 years and we're gonna be doing uh, 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 the single or actually the song that we have on the Finally Live project that I wrote uh, called Church Folks. 
but this is going to be church folks H, uh, HD or remix or okay. revised. We're going to spice it up and we're going to add another element to it that is going to bring some uh, excitement to that uh, particular song. Uh, uh, Bre Brother Jay, uh, uh, you know, um, uh, you know, it, I'm about it to bring him on now. Look, he, he ready. He, 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 he ready he, now, y'all. He, he ready. He's, he's ready. He's in the wife beater. He's ready. You know, he's ready. You know, he makes sure, you know, he's got a certain mindset. Oh, he's back now. He got a certain mindset. Oh, yeah. He, 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 he ready. He got the, he ready. <laughs> but, uh, but I'm telling you, uh, that's my big brother. He's, 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 when I tell you this guy right here is probably one of the, the, the greatest, most, uh, intense lead, lead singers that I've ever had the privilege to be with, man. We grew up together in this industry and in, uh, in this genre of quartet. And uh, and he has a very powerful testimony uh, himself of some of the things that he's been dealing with over the last couple of, uh, of months and, and things like that, you know, with, uh, you know, health crisis and things like that. But thank God he has the endurance, man, of, of Job. <laughs> and so... And uh, he, he's continued to, and so church folk, uh, you know, is that is that song that we're going to be uh, doing again, but it's going to have another element and that we're going to bring to it, and uh, we're excited about it. So well, look, yeah. Pastor, I I got to interject right here because y'all tore the house up so bad last year with that song. I yes. said, oh yeah, y'all just run that back, just just run that one back, Doc. Don't okay. don't even worry about. <laughs> I told Terry, don't even worry about nothing else. Just just do church folk again. And so I brought my brother on. Y'all messing with him. Y'all know, y'all have to know our relationship. Jay knows I love him. And and I, I was messing with him. But I wasn't ready, Jay. I'm just gonna be honest. I wasn't ready, man of God. I, I, I saw None the flush and I said, My God, well, let's 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 try to switch it up here. And I was over here trying to work the boxes, and the boxes weren't working the way I wanted to work. But anyway, listen. Jay, you are the lead on that song, uh, and you tore it up last year, man. And so uh, come on off of uh, mute, man, and let us talk to you. And I wanted to ask you, how how is your approach going to be different this year than it was last year? Because you, uh, as a pastor said, you did perform it last year. Y'all tore it up. I'm, I'm going to tell you. like they, If y'all weren't there, trust me, they tore it up. So what is your approach this year? Well, <clears throat> I don't know. My approach is the same, but I, I'll just say, y'all don't know my story. <clears throat> I'm just going, God has been so good, miraculously good. You know, I've been, um, I had to learn how to walk, breathe, all that again. Y'all just don't know my story. So I'm just going to do what I do that God blessed me with. I'm so thankful. I'm so thankful. And I'm just going to do me. <clears throat> Well, listen. That's basically it. You, you hit you hit a couple of high notes last year. You gonna hit the high notes again this year, Bishop? <laughs> if God if God says the same, I will. <laughs> All right. Well, look, we're looking forward to it, man. So, listen, y'all, we're talking to the exciting Holy Sons of Chicago, Illinois. Shout out to Terry Hallam, who is their manager. She's also our quartet division president for uh, Tegma and the Avidity Award. And listen, I, I just that song so much. I enjoyed it so much last year. That we had to run that thing back. And we're excited to have you guys back on the stage with us again for the second year in a row. How about that? Man, I'm just I'm just I'm just so thankful, uh Derek. I we appreciate it. You know, we just gonna we just gonna try to uh get the people uh something good, you know, because God is good. So come on. Yes, he is. So listen, man, you went through a health scare where we we really thought we almost lost you. And um, so just the fact that you're sitting here on this camera talking to me is so amazing. And I give God the glory for that, that he has preserved you and, and, and has kept you here with us to do more great ministry. So, man, can't wait to see you all in Memphis um, in October. But man, keep on inspiring and motivating and doing the things that y'all are doing. All right. So we, we appreciate y'all so much. Thank you all, man. Thank man. you. <laughs> Absolutely. So look, y'all, we're going to wrap this thing up. But before I do, I want to do something I did last night. I want to hear from everybody on everybody on stage. I want you to tell me, number one, what you are expecting from the show and what you think the people out there should be expecting that's going to attend the show. So we're going to ask that of everybody 
that's on the stage tonight. All right. And before I do that, though, I definitely wanted to uh, play the commercial uh, one more time. Praise God. So we're going to do that now. And then we're going to come back and we're going to start with Marchetta. So, so be ready. All right. Here we go. Avidity Awards, presented by Avidity TV, Friday, October 14th at 7 p.m. at Holleran Center, 225 South Main Street, Memphis, Tennessee, with performances by L. Spencer Smith, Lamont Sanders, Dr. James Mabel Jr., Michael Dixon, Cardell Booker, Marcetta Parker, Maurice Griffin, Zach Landry, and more. Tickets start at $40. For tickets and more info, visit theavidityawards.com. That's theavidityawards.com. Hosted by Aldrin McCuller of the Aldrin Brand and Marquise Jelks of Church Stuff. Get your tickets now. Listen, I love the way he put that urgency on now. <clears throat> Praise God. Now, listen, Saints, I want to talk to you that are uh, going to be attending the show. And you say, oh, you know what? I'm going to get my ticket at the door. No, ma'am and no, sir. There will not be any tickets at the door for you. I want to. I want y'all to be encouraged in the Lord tonight and know that you need to go and get these tickets early so that you don't be calling my phone like y'all love to do on the show day. And I'm not answering my phone on show day because I got a whole lot of other stuff I got to do. I'm going to run all around with chicken like a chicken with his head cut off, making sure the, the lights are right and the video packages are running and the stage crap is right and decals are right and the teleprompter. I don't have time to be asking your question about no tickets. Ain't no tickets on the day of the show. So get your tickets now. You heard the man say, Sean Key's put it. I'm going to put it up. Y'all, look look what Sean Key said. Y'all see that? Now. Get your tickets now. Don't be the one calling Derrick Huggins <laughs> on show day because Derrick Huggins is not going to answer your call. Amen. Y'all gonna have to be like a freak, Aretha Franklin. I'm gonna knock on your door and tap on your window pane, and I'm not gonna answer. Y'all gonna have to come tap on the window of the theater, and I'm not gonna come outside and, and, and come see about you because you didn't get your tickets on time. Get your ticket now. Don't do. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, Carmina, you 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 should. I just I should have stopped me. Did you, you go? Get, me. Did you go get Auntie Riri and and and? <laughs> I had to go get out to reread because I had to help the people understand. Listen, do not call my sell your phone. My great granny used to say, sell your phone. Don't call my sell your phone on the night of the show. I will not, or the day of the show, I won't be available. Don't even call me at six in the morning because I ain't talking to nobody but Jesus at that time. So don't call, don't call me thinking I'm going to answer your call. I'm not going to answer your call. I'm telling y'all now. Carmina, you know it. It's always going to be about 10 good saints. <laughs> well, I was calling you, and then they're going to start texting. When I don't answer, they're going to call me five times, and then when I don't, then they'll start texting. And then they'll call me and say, Derek won't answer his phone. Yeah, 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 yeah. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just saying, I'm just saying, everybody, get your tickets. No, seriously, because that theater is not very large, it seats about 400 people. So we are expecting a, a full out show and just the Memphis honorees alone, we're honoring Bishop Linwood Dillard um, of the Citadel Church of God in Christ, who's also a jurisdictional prelate of uh, Tennessee, I believe the Metropolitan Jurisdiction, and he's the national chain uh, 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 chairman of AIM, the AIM Convention. We're also honoring Dr. Bartholomew, Bartholomew Orr of Brown Missionary Baptist Church. They churches alone will plaque the place out with nobody else. So I'm just telling y'all, if y'all think y'all gonna sit around and wait and get some tickets, don't call my sell your phone. <laughs> I want somebody to put that in the comments. Don't call Derek, sell your phone. C E C E L L Y A. Phone. A M. Don't call my sell your phone. Matter of fact, I'm gonna put it in the comments right now. I'm gonna type it right here. This is what I don't want y'all to call. Okay. I'll see that. Y'all see that come in. I'm gonna put it up right here. Y'all say, "Don't call my cell your phone." Cell your phone. Because <laughs> it's not. I'm not answering for you. God bless you. 
I want y'all to be encouraged. And I still love everybody. I love everybody with the love of Jesus Christ. But I will not be answering your call. Get your tickets. Do not delay. It's going to be a wonderful show. It's going to be worth it. I promise you. I promise you. I promise you. It's going to be worth it. Okay. So, Marchetta, yes. tell the people what you personally are expecting to see the night of the show. I know this is your first time being with us. But also tell the people what you think they can expect as well. Oh, absolutely. I am ex in great expectation of, I know it's an awards show, but I still believe that there will be a mighty move of God. I'm excited to be with these other artists here. I'm excited for the comradeship that we're going to have that night. And I believe that, you know, God will move through that. You know, I, I don't think that there's any egos at the door. I believe that, you know, God can use who he wants to use and how he wants to use it. And even in an award show, I believe that God is still uplifted and he's still, he still will be pleased with our worship and our praise on that night. And that's what it's all about. I love it. I love it. Carmina, who you want to ask, call on next. I say we go to Dr. James Mabel Jr. James Willie, tell us what you think about it. Did you say James Willie? Did you just That's call my middle name? His name is James Willie. Yep. Didn't but you don't call this man government name? G U <laughs> not government, but government. G U B M E N T. All night. You wrong long. for that, Carmina. Cutting I say you love. Well, I'm expecting, as Marchetta said, <laughs> uh, same, same, same here. Um, I'm expecting number one, like I said, just a move of God, and then the fact of uh, being able to be encouraged and be an encourager to all of the independent artists and those who are going to be there. Uh, as we all know, it's a journey uh, being an independent artist, and so I'm looking forward to just being in the same space uh, with individuals who understand the journey that we're all on. And so uh, I'm looking forward to the, the fellowship uh, and meeting individuals who I have not met personally, uh, but that I follow from afar and have, you know, applauded and, and celebrated because I'm real big on celebrating others because what you make happen for other people, God will make happen for you. It is a true statement. So and then, of course, from the, the audience perspective, uh, I, I think you guys should expect just uh, a diversified um presentation of what God means to each and every one of those artists that's going to mount uh, the stage on that night in such a unique way. Beautiful thing about God's kingdom is that we all have our own niche. And uh, every time each one of our lips part, you know, God speaks through us. And so the, to the audience, just just stay open when you get in the same, get in the, the I said the sanctuary, Lord, I'm thinking this church. Listen, we might as well call it that. But yes, yeah, uh, when you get in the room, you know, just expect to hear God in so many vast ways on that night. Well, James, I want you to know that Miss Monique texted me and said you have a really nice kitchen. So I just thought <laughs> you should know. Thank you, Miss Monique. That was that was good, friend. You did good. I just you want you I just want good. you to know that's what she said, better God. <laughs> She like your kitchen. Praise God. So uh, <laughs> thank you, James. All right, let's go to Kim Person. Kim Person, tell the people what you are excited about um, the night of the show, as well as what you think the uh, attendees get excited about. I think it's going to be a night of unity. And I think it's going to be a night where I'm prepared to be moved because I want to move in the spirit realm. It's going to be a night of great energy great expectation. And I think it's just going to be a night of hope, inspiration, love, the joy of the Lord, all those things. Why? Because as James spoke, um, we're going to be with like-minded people who understand the journey. We, we understand how important these moments are. Some of us have prayed for these moments and to have the opportunity to come together with like-minded people who share the same um, mindset that we just want to do what God's called us to do. We just want our voice to be heard. And we want people to leave inspired and full of energy saying, wow, did y'all hear that song by James Maple? It was amazing. Did you hear that song by Marshall Parker? Oh, my God. Did you hear that song by the Holy Sons? Oh, my God. I want them leaving, calling our names, saying our names, knowing us by our first names and just saying, wow, that Kim person, that wonderful, marvelous, glorious Oh my God, give me more, give me more. So I hope as a result of all of us coming together that we'll get more streams, that we'll get more downloads, 
that will gain more people that will come to know more about us. And through knowing about us, they'll come to know more about Jesus. You so oily, Kim. You just <laughs> you just oily for Jesus. You is just Kim. I, I just imagine Kim in the kitchen making a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. And by the time she pick it up off the table, it's just be so oily because she just got so much oil on her. And I just think that's beautiful. That's wonderful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's you can, wonderful. You can yes. give her salmon or nothing else. She had to be peanut butter and jelly. I mean, Could woman of God. Only sandwich with some mustard. Get out. I mean, woman of God, I'm just saying, you know, peanut butter <laughs> and jelly is the first thing that to my mind. I'm just saying that's the first thing that, that come to my mind and things. But Carmina, you don't get to tell me what, what I saw in my, in my imagination. <laughs> This is my imagination. You do not own my imagination. My imagination is owned by me. And in my imagination, I saw peanut butter and jelly. You might have saw some, some fried okra in yours, but I saw pink butter and jetty. I'm sorry. I didn't mean no harm. I'm sorry. And I'll take it with wheat bread. All right. Well, there it is. Thank you, Kim. We appreciate you. All right. Let's get in uh, Pastor Arthur. Yes, sir. Holy Sons. Tell us what you're excited about personally for the show and what you think the people should be excited about. Oh man, listen, I'm excited because this is round two of what, what happened last year. We had an amazing time. It was a, 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 monum a monumental event. Uh, this was big, big, big for us. Uh, we were like, you know, kids at a candy store at this event last year. The camaraderie, uh, the other artists that we got a chance to meet uh, that sing different type of uh, gospel music. We all were one family in that moment, and we actually have re created relationships with those with those guys that we still have now intact. Guys like Melvin Chris Miles, who uh, performed last year. You know, we just saw him uh, at uh, uh, another quartet uh, convention, and you know, embraced. Man, we talked and embraced. It was like, man, you know. What's happening? He said, hey, hey, man, they wouldn't let me in. So, we, you know, we can enjoy some quartet. I was like, you should have told me I would have, you know, used my trump card to get you in. But, you know, um, uh, but the, the, I mean, the camaraderie and if the fact that we get a chance to just do it again, we're expecting great things. We're expecting great things. And just like a, a Brother Hudson said, you know, listen, don't 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 wait until you get to the door and try to get in because this is not a typical quartet program where folk wait till they get to the door and try to get in, you know, because we, you know, quartet is going to be there. We got to change our quartet mindset. So don't come in there talking about, you know, I got my, you know, my few dollars to get in. It won't work that way. So, so I change it. But uh, don't call, don't call him. Don't, don't call him. He ain't answering. He just said he ain't answering. Y'all better believe him. I believe he's telling the truth. But we're going to have an awesome time. And that's what uh, people, when y'all show up, just be ready to be blessed by God. There is going to be a nucleus of the presence of God because everybody is going to be releasing the grace that is on their lives, you know, from the dispensation of this Levitical anointing. And I'm telling you, your life will be changed. You're going to experience something that you've never experienced before because God is going to be in the building. Once the Levites get together and open their mouth and make that sound, the glory came. Uh, don't get me started. Don't get me started. But be ready for something that's going to be amazing. And I can say this uh, uh, with all confidence, Brother brother Huggins, you are you are trailblazer for a great thing that God is doing. And you just 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 poise yourself for the next level. And you're gonna you're gonna surpass all the things that people have uh, even expected of you. And in this this, my brother, is the real thing. And so everybody get ready for that. And let me shut my mouth because I feel something moving. Man of God. So, mm. Be quiet, but be ready. When you did all that, I almost heard, when God's in the building. Where are the pace sisters? Because, <laughs> all right, y'all preachers, y'all, I tell y'all something else. You listen, Pastor Arthur, Cord, Pastor Courtney, and Pastor Elsa, between the three of y'all especially, and even James, I feel like, I went through like three <laughs> courses of seminary. <laughs> and I, I told you clergy was tonight. Don't forget the district missionaries, Kim and Marshall. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I'm, 
it was just like y'all just that's what y'all gonna do to us that's how y'all gonna end this tonight okay all right cool 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 all right pastor Courtney, <laughs> tell us tell us what you're expecting personally and then what you think the audience will be, will be able to yeah. anticipate so I, i'm really expecting camaraderie i think that independent artists from my experience they have a void of pride that some other artists don't have. And I, and I, I want to just enjoy that, that we don't have to go through 16 security and nine publicists to speak to each other. And, and everybody's excited to support the other one. And, you know, we're not waiting to kill the house. So there's none left when the one comes behind us. We just all going to be there to just enjoy each other. Great music. Uh, respect the grind, respect the anointing. And I'm also expecting for the Avidity Awards to do two award shows what Netflix did to Blockbuster. I really wanted to raise the bar and make everybody have to play on a level field. Uh, because sometimes when there's a monopoly in an area, then you know, it carries a different stigma. And and I'll let you catch that next Thursday. But ah. I, I'm expecting this show to raise the bar for what we expect when it comes to war shows. I think the people are expecting God. Please don't get me wrong. I've been singing with James Fortune for the past seven years. I have been blessed to travel all over the world with him. I'm not knocking any other platform, but I do believe that sometimes in celebrating those that are showcased more, we overlook those who have the same skill set, the same oil set, and they just don't have the same showcase. So sometimes uh, Saul is in office, but David has been anointed. And you have to know that at a part any particular moment, God can say switch. And that's what I'm expecting to happen in Memphis in October. We're going to see the switch. Uh, I was screaming for Lamont on that. I was at the sellers. I was screaming for him. I've never met this man in my life, but I could tell his heart. And I was so happy to see him on that stage because I believe that more people with that heart are getting ready to go on the stage. David, one of my favorites, uh, Bishop Smith, uh, you know, I live by this premise and I'm done. If you're focused and doing what you're supposed to do, you won't have to be seen. Your oil will make them sin for you. And I believe that Avidity is a platform that's going to cause people who have not been auditioned to get the part. And I'm just excited to be a part of everything that's happening. Thank you for letting me be on your platform. I appreciate it. Don't nobody say nothing. Just let that sit. Because he preached that thing. He preached that thing. All right, y'all can have regular service once again because he preached that thing. <laughs> and, and I'm a, and I'm gonna tell you why I know Courtney's words are sincere. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Because um, when I said that he was gonna be on our um, emerging artist stage, he didn't give me the normal thing that people give me. You know because. I've actually heard artists say things like, well, I'm this and I'm that. And I'm not saying that there aren't artists that shouldn't be or whatever. Do you? But what I appreciated was he still respected the show and the platform, regardless of that designation. And, um, and I'll be honest with y'all. I had a few that were uh, felt that that was an insult to them and they didn't want to do the show. And I told them, God bless you. And I meant it, right? Um, and the reason why, you know, not to spend all this time on this, but I just wanted to, here's what I wanna say. I've been working with independent artists for 24 years, since I was 19 years old. And I don't I, I can't remember which of you all said this earlier. You kind of alluded to it earlier, but for whatever reason, all of the artists that I've met that are on the secular side of the ledger 
have all been super nice, gracious, humble people. These are people with multi-platinum records, multiple Grammy wins and other major award wins. These are people with that make millions and millions of dollars. But they have all, I'm going to be honest with y'all, it is sad to me even to say this now. Out of those artists versus the artists I meet on the gospel side, those artists were much nicer. And they have more accomplishment. And you would think, and then let's just reduce it all the way down to this. You're representing Jesus Christ through your music. And your presentation is nasty. It's aloof. Right? It's disingenuous. And a whole lot of other adjectives I could, I, but it'd take me too long. And my only point is this. And this is what I tell any artist that I've ever worked with is you always remember when nobody was calling you, when nobody knew your name, when, because see, let me tell you about me. I'll remind you quick. You, you the same artist that used to scrounge for change in your car. And I always do that to say it's important that we are, first of all, we're representatives of Christ. And we should be reflect, that love should be reflective in all of us. Whether or not you agree with every person, their choices in life, or any of that, okay? I'm just saying it's so important to me that this show represent artists like Courtney, like Marchetta, like Kim, like James, like Lamont, like the Sons, like Bishop Smith, and all the others. I want to say from my heart to yours, I love and appreciate every last one of you. You didn't have to agree to do this, but you did. I know y'all thanking me. That's cool. But I want to thank you. Because to be clear, there is no show without y'all. That's a fact. And I also want to say, you all help keep you all help keep in the front of my mind why I started the show in the first place. Because I felt there was a void of independent representation on the major platforms in gospel. And I wanted to change that, right? And, and I want to be honest. I said this last night. The, the first six years were very hard. Last year wasn't as bad, but y'all, it's, it's been a journey to get to seven years. So, but God made me a promise last year. He said, if you keep going, I'll bless it beyond measure. And I see him, I, I want to say publicly, and I want to thank God publicly because I've seen him live up to everything he told me, he promised me last year. He said, but if you hold out and you keep going, you're going to see a big difference next year and the years, the subsequent years to follow. So I just want to thank all of y'all that are on here tonight for your gifts, for your humility, for your service, because believe it or not, you're serving. I'm not paying none of y'all. Am I? <laughs> Okay, y'all, you know, some of y'all traveling on your own dime, you know, that are not that they're local. So I want to say this, and I don't mind sharing that with everybody because I want people to understand if we build this community, right, mm -hmm. then we can speak collectively as one voice and we really can move the needle in the industry in a way that we couldn't otherwise. This is an important thing that we're doing. This is historic, not only in the sense of that it's it's a really huge platform for independent artists, but it's historic in the sense that we really can galvanize a nation of independent artists to speak as one voice. And I believe Avidity Awards is going to be on the forefront of that 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 movement. And I just think I want to thank all of you for agreeing to be on that journey with us. So I want to say that. Okay, now we got, I know we got Carmina. Who else we got to talk to? And well, uh, we've got to wrap it up with Lamont Sanders. Did we hear from Bishop or? No, we did. No, we okay. didn't hear from Bishop. Right. We got to hear from Bishop and from Lamont. Okay. Yes. So who so you want to go first, man? Oh, go ahead. Who? 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 <laughs> <laughs> Lamont can wrap it up. Let Good. Lamont can wrap it up. You know, I'm, no, 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 I'm no, looking no, forward to. No, 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 Bishop. <laughs> you, you wrap it up. Because you, trust me, I, I feel I feel something from you. <laughs> I do too. I do too. Lamont, I, you, you in the vein, Doc. You in the vein, Bishop. Lamont, you in the vein, hold, hold on, sir. Hold on. Yes, 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 yes. Let's give honor. So um, 
I'm looking forward to a great, great evening um, just to get together. Um, I don't know if you guys who went last year to the pre-show, but God did, did something special through Derek. And um, we had a moment at the pre-show. I don't know if you guys remember that. That was heavy. It was heavy. When I say heavy, God came. It was heavy. And um, I just speak in the atmosphere that it happened not only in the pre-show this, this year, but in the main show. And we just want God to have his way. We're just coming in as, as humble servants. And everybody just bring oil. Bring oil on your voice. Come in your voice and let God do what he's going to do this year. I'm excited. Yeah, thank you, Lamont. Yeah, that, that was special. And I predict we might have the same thing happen this year in the pre-show as well as the main show. So thank you again, Lamont, for that. We appreciate it. All right, Bishop. It's on you. <laughs> Actually, I want to I want to thank all of you, all of you, all, especially Derek and Kamina. Thank you for having us tonight. I speak for us collectively that uh, it is it is what you do and your commitment to what God has given you to do your assignment that encourages ours. And so, definitely, we want to thank you so very much. I, I think I, I'm looking forward to the celebration and the appreciation of independent artists. Um, it's amazing that again like i said the the lifeblood of gospel music has always been the independent artist and for me again the 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 major artists casting a no aspersions upon them but they get all the shine they get the they get the glitz and as you know i couldn't say any better than my friend courtney said brother franklin pastor franklin said you know that if we wait a, a long enough our anointing will create its own appetite. And I think that uh, Avity Awards ha, ha, is going to give us and has given us that particular platform to display that anointing. So uh, uh, the celebration of independent artistry, uh, the coming together without pretense and all that other stuff. I've been to the Stella Awards. I've been to other awards. I've walked the red carpet. And the level of pretentiousness that can come sometimes come off of God's people who wants you to sing and shout when they get on the stage, but don't want to say good evening to you when they walk by, you're going to the restroom. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm hoping, this is my first one, so I can only but hope and expect that that would not be the atmosphere, that we would walk in a tremendous level of appreciation. Um, and that, let me say this, and I don't know why I'm saying this, th there's a saying, an axiom that says, familiarity breeds contempt. And I'm praying, that we don't get too familiar with what God is going to do, that we treat it like, like it's not the treasure that it is. I, 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 want, I want us to really, really understand that this moment in Avity is giving us an opportunity to experience God in a, in a different way. I, and, you know, I, and again, I've done the pre-show at several different shows, you know, um, but to hear your conversation around, around. Uh, it going the next level, going up higher than it was last year uh, with the Holy Sons, uh, with Lamont just saying that bring your oil because it's going up higher. That's the expectation. I haven't heard that in a long time with gospel people coming together on this kind of platform. And I'm praying so very desperately that we don't get familiar with the glory of God that God, he gives as something that is new and fresh, that we always expect him to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think. So I'm expecting when we release that kind of anointing and that kind of energy toward the people of God in our ministry, that the reciprocal is going to happen, that you will never lack for support. You will never lack for funding. You will never lack for provision because they're they will sow seeds, not because of the music, but because of the expectation of what God is going to continue to increasingly do. And so that's what I'm expecting. I believe I'm believing God for the Avity Awards to blow your mind and everybody that comes there. And I'm just grateful to be a part of it. Well, man, <laughs> yeah, all of that. Um, thank you, Bishop. And um I received that and I, I, I'll let you know. And Carmina can attest to this. When we're talking and having our meetings, you know, we have fun. We have, we have great, even among our team, there's a lot of love and camaraderie. And I think that's the culture 
that I wanted yeah. to um, create. And I, I believe, and again, I don't, I don't want anyone to misinterpret my words as a slight to anybody or any other entity. I'm just saying that it is important to me that a certain culture is, is present. And I, I believe we've lived up to, to that thus far. And I believe that that's something I consistently almost browbeat them with when we're having our in our personal meetings about the show. Um, we talked about at this last meeting, we talked about I really wanted us to go overboard with customer service, whatever area that you're working in with the show to make people feel welcome, to make them feel like they're not a nuisance if they're asking questions about the show or anything component about the show explain it and do what we can and yeah we all have days we have good days we have bad days and i understand that but one of the things i'm always impressing upon them is when it's showtime it's showtime and people are not um, aware of whatever day you had and frankly it shouldn't be their burden to carry you, you know deal with that right get some help if you need to to help you when you're on post at the show to be able to present. There were a lot of challenges we had last year, Carmina knows, but I tried to make it to where it did not show on me. And even though I was feeling a lot of pressure last year because just, just crazy stuff, like the electric went out one time during the, you know, we were getting ready, not the electric um, lights, but the electric power wise put on the stage. And that, that took more time than we thought and all of that. And so I kept thinking, it doesn't matter what you're feeling. These people are here to support this vision. You go out there and you put on the best face you got and let them know. I was uh, very apologetic. A lot of times, some people thought I apologized too much. But I just wanted people to know that we didn't take them for granted. We didn't take their time for granted. We respect their time. We respect them. And so I just wanted to say that's the culture we try to um, create here at the Avidity Awards, and that's what we want to continue to do. And I'll tell you, Bishop Smith, that is my prayer every single day for this show. Even as I'm preparing and doing the things behind the scenes that I need to do, um, as I'm praying to God, I'm asking him, let that spirit continue to go forward in this show, despite the heights we will go to. Because I think sometimes what happens, to your point about the familiarity piece, is once there's a certain ech echelon reached, then it's kind of like, oh, well, now we arrived. So now we, we can relax on being nice. We can relax on having good customer service. We can relax on, you know, treating people with respect. We can relax on being humble. And the, it's so so I believe the reason why I had so much struggle with this show for the first six years was because I think God wanted seared in my consciousness what I had to deal with and how I felt to be mistreated and how I felt when people cast aspersions about the show and, and and dogged it and put it down and said it would never go anywhere and do anything. I believe God let me see what this is what we forget about suffering. There is an art of suffering. And when Paul talked about it in Romans, the fifth chapter, right, he talked he talked about rejoicing and suffering. And I believe there is a necessary rejoicing when it comes to suffering, because it's the suffering that causes us to mature and grow. Right. It causes us to appreciate the things that God ultimately does for us. And that's what I, I'm, I'm just going to stop here and say this. That, I think, has set the predicate for me as the leader of this to say we will never forget where we came from and we won't forget the challenges that we had and we won't forget the struggles and all of that. So thank you, Bishop, for those words. We appreciate you again. All of my wonderful people. Carmina, I want to ask you. Yes. What are you personally looking to see? Of course, you work with the show and you've been there all the years of it. Mm -hmm. But what do you think the people can expect as well? Well, you know, I'm going to say it again. I want it to be an experience. I want people to leave and, and have been proud and be able to, you know, you see people posting and just happy and excited that they were able to celebrate with these amazing, amazing artists and, and connect with maybe even new people that they've never met before and, and just, just it be a complete experience. That's what I want everybody to walk away with. And for myself, I will be going to Elvis's house. I done told y'all <laughs> yesterday, I'm not taking it back. So I'm going to be with y'all at the appointed time, but there will be a portion of time that I will be. And I know Tiffany told me yesterday, she couldn't understand why I was trying to run over there because he's not going to be there. But that's not the point. I'm going to Elvis's house. So 
that's that's my anticipation. Every time I think I'm just gonna get this I'm profound thing from you, like you just turn the corner on me every time. So, <sighs> okay, so let it be known to the masses, Carmina yeah. Barnett will be going to Elvis's house. She'll be going to Graceland. Um, congratulations, Carmina. We're excited that you will get to go to Elvis's house when you get to Memphis. That's amazing. I'm very happy for you. I'm sure you will have memorabilia and tokens uh, of affection that you will take from that experience and you will share with, with the people from here to the end of time. But that being said, <laughs> I want to thank our wonderful performers and guests, the exciting Holy Sons, Lamont Sanders, uh, Courtney Franklin, Marchetta Parker, Kim Person, Dr. James Maple Jr., and the right Reverend Bishop L. Spencer Smith, the potentate of gospel. I want to thank him and all of you. And of course, my wonderful co-host, Miss Carmina Barnett. Uh, now, y'all, me and Car Carmina have this relationship. We go back and forth. But I want to say this about Carmina um, publicly. Carmina, the 20 years that I've known Carmina, there has never been one time that I've asked her to do something and she didn't do it. Not once. I want y'all to hear me carefully. <laughs> 20 years, right? And, and, and here's what I need y'all to know. I'm talking about going back to the days where I wasn't really known at all in the industry at all. I was just getting really started. But I would call Carmina. She would come MC. She would do whatever she could. It, it, you know, she had very little room to do stuff on the air because, you know, they want you to run that coin. But whatever she could do for free, she did it. <laughs> Uh, you know, and so I just want to I want to celebrate Carmina tonight because Carmina has been a jewel, a crown jewel in our award show family. And she makes us all laugh. Um, but she's she's a hard worker and she's dedicated to the cause. And I, I thank God for you, Carmina. Seriously, I, I'll joking aside. I want you to know um, I respect you to the hilt. I, I love you. I appreciate you. And I just thank you for just being on this journey with me and, and helping us. Now, don't you say nothing crazy after all that. I'm not, I was gonna say, I appreciate you guys. <laughs> you know, I love you. I love the team. That's why it's my honor to do what I can. So please know, I don't take it for granted to have this opportunity. So I appreciate God for you guys, I do. Okay, Carmina, somebody's struggling on this Facebook user. So do you want to address that before we get off the air? <laughs> I don't understand what- Is that Maurice can't... Griffin? <laughs> I Who is that Facebook is. Facebook user? I want you to identify yourself. I don't know why the enemy is coming against you. So let me tonight. explain to, to our guests tonight. So what happens is when you don't pay your whole internet bill, they won't let your name come up. You just become the Facebook user. So we're trying to really encourage those to go ahead. We're piecing it out. Go not pay that bill. And then that way you can be you can identify who you are. I can't, as I can't do this anymore. I can't do May this the Lord watch. Yes, I can do it. I can do it. I love y'all. So everybody, once again, the 7th Annual Avidity Awards, all the information is on the screen. Go to our website, theavidityawards.com if you want a sponsor, if you want a vendor table, if you need a media credential, if you want to be a presenter, all of that is there on the website. If you want a host hotel, shout out to the Hyatt Centric, uh, who's been wonderful. They are our host, one of our host hotels, and then the Holiday Inn downtown, um, Beale Street. Um, I think that's three Three, three blocts from the venue and the um, Hyatt is right across the street from the Halloween Center. So um, it's going to be great. So thank you all again. We love y'all. Thank you, artists, performers. I love y'all. We'll see y'all next time, y'all. We got to go. God bless. Peace. <laughs>